I'm going to start this experiment and then explain a little bit about what we're trying to demonstrate here. So right here we have styrofoam balls uh, bought from Hobby Lobby and we're just going to put them into all these various components of gasoline and then watch what happens over the course of the next five to seven minutes. We'll actually put in the last one into one that has been shown to be the most aggressive. Um, what you're seeing here is multiple components of gasoline. Most people don't realize that they can go to Home Depot or Lowe's, even Walmart, and buy 35% of your gasoline in the solvent dissection. Uh, many people think that ethanol is an aggressive uh, solvent, yet uh, unfortunately most uh, people, and especially even mechanics, don't realize that aromatics, mostly benzene and tylene, are the most aggressive towards plastic components, seals, hoses, and gaskets. Uh, a major marine manufacturer is trying to put in a warning into the gasoline standards, but the oil companies seem to continue to stop that. So going from the left to the right of these major uh, components of gasoline, you have mixed olefins, which uh, only average about 10% of gasoline today. Then you have pentane, which is a light end that's used more in the winter time. But pentane and isopentane can be 10, 15% of gasoline and in the winter even up to 20%. And then you have hemptane, which is the zero reference fuel for octane testing. Uh, and next to that you have isooctane, which is the 100 octane fuel rating that they use to determine 100 octane. Uh, both of them are very common. And then you can go to Lowe's or Home Depot and buy denatured alcohol, which I have ethanol, pure ethanol in that sample jar. Um, it is sold as a, uh, a for cleaning glass or it's sold for uh, fuel uh, for cook stoves. Um, and then we have tylene and xylene. They used to sell tylene at Lowe's and Home Depot and about a year ago we saw more of a shift to the xylene to help reduce some of the vapors that uh, come off of that. Uh, those are benzenes. Tylene is methyl benzene. Uh, xylene can uh, you know, sometimes be thought to be kind of a, a simple solvent but it is dimethyl benzene. And then you've got the C9 plus benzene aromatics in, found in gasoline. So since we just started this video, uh, you're seeing styrofoam almost disappear in the tylene. Some may question why we're using tylene um, uh, and xylene or using the styrofoam balls here as an example. Uh, we, we see that uh, anything really built uh, on uh, a benzene ring structure, whether it's plastic, uh, nylon, uh, various resins, and styrofoam. They all are built on the benzene ring structure. It's just styrofoam's a little less dense, and so you're seeing, uh, you know, the reaction just a little bit faster. But again, when we simply add ethanol to like gasoline and uh, test how much gas permeates right through a gas can, ethanol slows it down. But tylene is the most aggressive, and as you can see, it is completely dissolved in the time frame of this video. Uh, next will be the, the xylenes that will disappear, and then it's just progressively worse, or it gets progressively better uh, as you start to dilute um, the, uh, the benzene, uh, tylene, and xylene. We started to realize this uh, a year and a half ago when we found high levels of benzene in Kansas City and realized that its reaction to plastic to swell and permeate uh, is actually uh, was increased due to the presence of, of just two and a half percent benzene. We started simply adding tylene, we can make it worse, and yet uh, we made a video on how simply adding ethanol uh, can make it better. So unfortunately there's a lot of mechanics out there <clears throat> who don't have the resources and or the time to actually kind of, you know, experiment what, uh, what is the real cause and concern 
when it comes to um, the gasoline components they see today. We recently sampled uh, uh, several, uh, all the E-Zeros we could find in Wichita, Kansas. Uh, we ended up collecting 12 E-Zero regulars and uh, four E-Zero premiums. Uh, just in the E0 regulars compared to E10, we were seeing a 45% increase in benzene and uh, methylbenzene or toluene, uh, a 40% increase in the xylenes, and an overall increase of 25% aromatic benzenes in the E0 fuels. So when we're talking about uh, uh, seeing a little bit more E0 into the market, um, we also have to wonder, you know, what is this doing to our vehicles or small engines? In Chicago, uh, in the summer of 2014, we pulled five samples. One sample had 18% toluene uh, and 38% total aromatics. So we have to really question uh, the small engine folks uh, in Chicago um, having more issues about what's in their gas that's not ethanol. So again, the, the most aggressive components of gasoline is benzene, which happens to be only limited to 0.6%, and then toluene can be anywhere from 5 up to 10, 15%. And also these aromatics are one of the key reasons why we need more detergent in our gasoline and uh, more particulate emissions, more PAH emissions, and uh, so here we're just going to pull out the last of the little bit of residue or what's left of the styrofoam of the xylenes. You can see it's almost completely dissolved. It would be gone here in another minute or so. Uh, the C9 plus aromatics is you know, dissolving at a much slower rate. And then once we get into the gasoline, uh, since it's so dilute at this point, we're just starting to see a little bit of reaction once you're into gasoline. Now if we take ethanol, we can, uh, since it is ethanol, the same ethanol that's in your Listerine, uh, in your, a uh, lot of your medical uh, medicines, you know, it's, ethanol is the same as in your alcoholic beverages as well. We see no uh, issues here or in the other components of gasoline. It is primarily and what we see almost exclusively an issue with aromatics and uh, the cause and damage we're seeing to plastics, seals, hoses, and gaskets.